This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. There are many business families in the world of Indian industry who can claim a history that goes back a long way, who can claim to be inheritors of old money, but not many who can claim an ancestry that goes back to Mughal times. The Lal Bhais of Ahmedabad are probably the only industrial family who can claim an ancestor who was a jeweler in the Mughal courts and who is believed to have collected some jewels that found their way into the peacock throne. This is in 1570 or something, round about that. And uh, he was the first Nagar Shet. And then uh, we, I am the twelfth in the line. Nagar Shet's family is another family, but we are the descendants of the Nagar Shet. The most prominent uh, person in the entire hierarchy was Shantida Shet, and that was in the 17th century. And he was the jeweler in the court of Jahangir and Shah Jahan. And he was a very prominent industrialist at that point of time. He was not only known for his entrepreneurship, but uh, I think the social responsibility, the way he built or donated to social causes really brought him as a you know very prominent personality in, in his time. As the story goes, you know whether it is true or not, I don't know. But uh, a gem was to be identified, and he was the only one who could identify and identify and really price it. So Akbar was very impressed, and he became the one of the jewelers of the kingdom. Jesh, were you always aware of the legacy of this family that you married into? Actually not. When I got married, I mean, I knew that they were a business house and my family knew this family very well. Mm. But personally, I didn't. And uh, the first thing Sanjay's grandfather told me was that um, he gave me a little booklet and he asked me to read through it. And he says, remember, I'm going to ask you some questions on it. He was very proud of his legacy and he really felt that we should know the kind of family we are come from. And what was the booklet about? It was the life of Shantida Shet, our uh, ancestor who was, uh, you know, one of our most uh, celebrated people even then. Mm. Uh, many historians have noted his uh, contribution in the social life of Ahmedabad. Mm -hmm. uh, he, not only was he a jeweler, but he wielded a lot of influence there. It is evident in all the farmans and things that the Mughals uh, bestowed upon the family. Yes. There's a very unusual story, very, uh, I mean, it belies Aurangzeb's nature, but uh, our family had lent money to Dara Shuko, who eventually was thrown off by Aurangzeb. And when Aurangzeb became emperor, Shantidash traveled on horseback right from Ahmedabad to Delhi to ask for his monies back. And Aurangzeb's relationship with the family was a little stormy in the sense when he was Subedar here, he had taken over the Chintamani temple. And on uh, Shantidas's request to Shah Jahan, Shah Jahan made him return the temple back to the Jains. The Jains, of course, didn't take it back because they felt it was desecrated. But that was the influence Shantidas had at the Mughal court. And when he had been ordered to do, undo one of his wrongs. In spite of that, Aurangzeb returns the money. 
The Lalbhai family still has among its cherished possessions farmans from Mughal emperors lending their support to the family in its efforts to preserve ancient Jain temples and endowing it with wealth and properties. By the second decade of the 17th century, Shanti Das, the oldest known ancestor of the Lalbhai family, was already a very rich man.